Hello everyone, Gabatron here. This video is going to be a gameplay plus commentary style video where we are trying to seed the GamePunch.net server or Glow's Battlegrounds server. Check out the description below for links if you are interested in the GamePunch.net Hell Let Loose community. I usually help seed this server at least a couple times a week and spend most of my time playing on it, so check it out. For those of you who don't know, server seeding is an attempt to grow a server's population, so we're just trying to get a full game going here. Different servers have different rules, but they are all pretty similar. Anyway, I spend the first portion of this match placing garrisons, and I thought it presented a nice opportunity to talk about what makes a good place for a garrison, or at least what I think makes a good place for a garrison. This video will only be showing the first part of the match, but if you want to see more, let me know in the comments and I can make a full video on server seating. Those matches can be pretty unique. Also note that at the time of making this video, garrisons must be placed in friendly territory at least 200 meters apart and require 50 supplies to build. I mention this because Hell Let Loose is still in early access and these values may change in the future, but the concepts we cover here won't change very much. A helpful tip to remember is that each grid square is 200 meters by 200 meters. Okay, our team is pretty barren, so I take the commander role, as this will allow me to build garrisons, drive trucks, and give me access to commander's orders. The most important one this early in the game being supply drops. We need to get supplies on the map early and often to give ourselves options as the battle progresses. First I take a long look at the map, scoping out good places for garrisons. Move markers will help you navigate. So on the way to the move mark we pass this little house and I scout it out to see if it's a good Gary spot. It looks like it is. The house provides cover, there are also stone walls and dirt mounds around for cover. So this could be a good place, but my move mark is closer to the trenches, so let's check that out. Doesn't look good to me. Other than the trench itself there is just too much open space here for a garrison. So back to the house we go. Notice where I put the supply drop. Not in the middle of the road, not out in a field, but in a spot where it can at least be concealed and next to cover in case we have to defend it. The supplies actually fall into the house, which is nice. They are now difficult to spot. Also note where I place the garrison. I stop building it at first as it could be visible from down the road and move it behind the house. The best way for the enemy to attack this garrison is from the southeast, which is pretty open. But even if they are successful at doing so, it will be difficult and costly for them. Now let's pause and take a look at our map and talk about why this is a good garrison in the bigger picture. First, it allows us access to the trench system. From this system, we can move north into artillery battery and cover the approaches to it from the southwest. Second, it allows us a path direct north using the down glider and terrain features as cover all the way into artillery battery. Third, it allows us to defend the trenches and see down the road all the way into the outskirts of town. Fourth, it allows us an avenue south in case we get outflanked or in an attempt to move to crossroads. Fifth, there is an easily defendable group of buildings back to the east shall we need to abandon this garrison and build a new one. And lastly, it allows us to use the trenches as a springboard to move into the town outskirts to the west. This is a good garrison because we can defend it and it gives us options. Always using my move marks to help navigate, I'm on my way to artillery battery to put up another garrison.
I decide to use the truck to deliver supplies here as I envision the server filling up and we may need engineers to fortify this area or perhaps put nodes down. Note how I place the supplies off of the road. This will prevent these supplies from being a roadblock to any friendly vehicles trying to move through the area. Never place your supplies in the middle of the road. I've placed the garrison in a spot I think will be difficult to approach, although it will be important to hold the house on the point as it directly overlooks this garrison. Now let's pause and look at the map. From this garrison we can directly reinforce artillery battery. We can defend from any attack heading northeast up Rue de Verdun. A pretty good place for an anti-tank gun I might add. Third, we can defend from and observe anything happening to the direct west. Fourth, we can move north and defend from anyone trying to outflank us. Once all this has been consolidated, we can then push southwest down Rue de Verdun and push from our northern positions into hospice for even more map control if we need to. This is a good garrison for the same reasons as our first one, but now they help complement each other. These two garrisons will help us create a more stable front line. Now let's get a more offensive Gary up. Remember, don't put supplies in the middle of the road. This Gary should be difficult for the enemy to get to. Here I get the truck stuck on a stone wall. They still have some refining to do when it comes to trucks. Uh, this is my opinion, but I think the truck should have manual transmissions and working side view mirrors, or at least a simple way of being able to see directly behind you. What do you think? Let us know by leaving a comment. So let's pause and look at the map again. Our new Gary and Grid Square G4 isn't the best, but it will allow us to defend to the north and provide support to any allies moving on hospice, as well as defend and observe southwest along Rue de Verdun. But this garrison is best suited for attack. Here we can move southwest along the road and be in the capture sector very quickly, as well as move south before turning west to put pressure on the church in St. Mariglis directly. Not to mention meet up with any allies moving into town from our first garrison. I'm out of supplies, so it's time to get more. You can refill your supply truck by going back to any HQ and driving near the resupply area. Now that we have the northern part of the map figured out, let's try and do something similar in the south. I get this truck stuck and I can't get it out, but I shouldn't have even tried to drop supplies here as you can't drop supplies from a truck behind friendly lines. In this case, columns I and J. I can use a supply drop though, so that's what I end up doing. I also spawn a new supply truck since this one is stuck. I forget to place a Gary here for now, but let's move on. I use a supply drop and place another Gary.
Notice I keep it out of the F column. This means that even if we lose St. Mary Glees, we will not lose this garrison. From here we can use the cemetery to defend anything to the south and southwest, but more importantly we can push straight west into the point or move southwest to help secure our southern flank. This garrison right here in G5 ends up being a big factor in us winning this match in the future. Now I end up putting some supplies in the point for good measure before heading south. This little area down here is called Checkpoint and it's a good spot to hard there is a road intersection here and it leads all the way into St. Merrick Lee, so we will want to control this area. Not only that, but we can use it as a springboard to move on Rue de Gambosville if the server seeds quickly. I probably pronounced that wrong, but you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't build it, but another good spot for a Gary would be in this area in grid E6. From here we can defend from enemies approaching from the southwest as well as attack from it. So I finally made that fallback garrison at Crossroads and picked up some more supplies. I feel pretty confident in our garrison network, so I'm going to head to the church in town and organize the defense and proceed with the match. Now remember that these aren't the only good places for garrisons on the map, and I encourage you to find other spots and areas. Be creative. This video is more of a guide on what kinds of things you should be looking for when placing garrisons. Also keep in mind that this was an ideal scenario where I was not in combat, I had free reign to drive wherever I wanted, and I had access to commander orders. A fully populated match will definitely have an effect on where you want to place garrisons, or even where you can place garrisons. If you want to know how I drew the arrows and such on the maps, I used a website called stratsketch.com, link will be in the description below. Okay, I hope you all learned something from this, or at least got some fresh perspective. Please leave a like if you did. Don't forget to check out the links below and check into that GamePunch.net Hell Let Loose community and server. It's the server I spend most of my time on, so it's a good way to squad up with me if that's something that interests you. You can also support the channel directly via the PayPal link below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Hell Let Loose content. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.